Pemirsa, industri kelapa sawit di tanah air terus aktif dalam mengakselerasi pencapaian target net zero emission melalui berbagai inisiatif hijau seperti dilakukan PT Austindo Nusantara Jaya Tbk. Simak selengkapnya wawancara khusus saya dengan Vice President Director PT Nusantara Jaya yang sudah kami rekam beberapa waktu lalu. Efforts to reduce carbon emissions to maintain global temperature stability as well as combat extreme weather conditions due to climate change is all part of Indonesia's commitment to reach the target of net zero emissions by 2060. This commitment is now the responsibility of all key players in the sector, including the agribusiness food company PT Austindo Nusantara Jaya. Climate change has caused extreme weather conditions in our world today. So, what efforts have been made to reduce the impact? To discuss more, I'm joined by Vice President Director of PT Austindo Nusantara Jaya, Mr. Gita Govindan. Mr. Gita, how agribusiness can be sustainable? Well, uh, uh, agribusiness uh, is a huge part of the GDP and uh, most agribusiness companies uh, have now committed to sustainability, sustainability criteria. This whole range of principles and, uh, and the criteria and indicators which they need to comply mm -hmm. to achieve the sustainability uh, objective which they are looking for. Okay, about the commitment. And all key players, the government and private sector in almost all countries are currently committed to maintaining a stable global temperature and prevent the impact of extreme weather. So we want to know what commitments and efforts has PT Austindo Nusantara Jaya done to support the efforts? Basically what has happened is uh, over the years we've become sensitive to our carbon footprint. We have been evaluating what's our carbon footprint and we, are making st we were making steps to reduce our carbon emissions throughout our operations. So we introduced a lot of uh, projects like composting fertigation, recycling, biomass. Uh, we're also looking at the transportation side on bio-CNG. We also look at uh, methane capture plants to capture uh, uh, methane from palm oil waste and to convert that to electrical en energy. We have huge conservation areas uh, and forest. Uh, we, we protect these areas by em empowering the communities to ensure these forests are not encroached upon or destroyed or looked after because of fire and other illegal logging. So the waterways and the peat all contributes to carbon sequestration, which is, uh, it's a, which is an important component of reducing our emissions. This is a long road. Uh, this involves uh, uh, discussions, uh, discussion with stakeholder, stakeholders. We also have uh, approaches to deal with government institutions and government bodies. We try to influence public policy, especially to reach the objectives. They have been very forthcoming. So we need to get our policies right. We need to get the politics right. And then we need to allocate uh, uh, investments and then the innovative part of, part of it. Uh, we're trying to be a leader, uh, be a catalyst for change uh, in the industry. Uh, we subscribe to a lot of digital platforms like Sport, CDP, uh, and then uh, we were classified as uh, le under leadership category for the CDP on climate. Uh, we became uh, fourth in the world for the sport evaluation and probably the first in Indonesia. Uh, we also subscribe to sustainable reportings like uh, following GRI standards. So. That's what we are trying to do. We are trying to influence as much as possible to all our stakeholders mm -hmm. on this serious challenge, mm -hmm. uh, not only as the world is, world is facing. Together to reach the goal, right? Uh, absolutely. And we want to achieve those uh, projects and complete it. So we reach the uh, net zero uh, objective by 2030. It's an ambitious target, uh, uh, although uh, many uh, feel it is an aggressive target, but we have put these targets and embedded into the uh, strategic uh, plan of the company. And you've also talked about the commitment to reduce the GHG. Can you elaborate it more? And maybe you have a target in percentage? Yes. So uh, the target uh, which we ultimately want to achieve in 2030 is net zero. Yep. 
So in terms of the emission reductions uh, for uh, compost, we can reduce, uh, we have actually improved yields by 15% and we reduced inorganic fertilizer use by about 20 to 25%. Uh, so the nitrogen fertilizer, the nitrogen part of it causes huge global warming potentials in these areas. So organic is one, fertigation is one, and then we've got recycling biomass, so we are less dependent on, 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 on um, fossil fuel. We looked at bio CNG. The transport sector of transporting FFB to the mills mm -hmm. contributes hugely to global warming. Mm -hmm. So we want to use bio compressed natural gas from palm oil waste. Mm -hmm. And we are going to uh, have all of our concessions under bio CNG eventually. So these are the figures uh, uh, which we have, projects which we are in place. The results are still being uh, finalized, uh, but we can see that it's providing and yielding good results mm -hmm. and also reducing our production cost. Okay, so what are the strategies and innovation that have been developed by ANG in order to reduce the impact of extreme weather due to climate change? So I will highlight some of the projects. Okay. Uh, some of it is, uh, one, one of the main, the earlier projects mm -hmm. is compost. Yeah. We want to replace inorganic fertilizer, which has got a huge impact on this thing. So all of our concessions will eventually use compost. At least 40% of the concession will, will, will be applied with organic compost. It's coming from the EFB, the empty fruit bunch, which we process the FFB with. Second is fertigation, we're using water-soluble fertilizers. Mm -hmm. uh, Indonesia experienced long periods of drought, four months, five, sometimes five months during the El Nino event. Mm -hmm. So hydration is an important key factor to ensure that we, has, we get sustainable yields. Uh, number three is we have always recycled uh, biomass into our boilers to generate power and, en uh, power and energy. We have optimized that. We run our mills uh, optimally we actually improved the capacity of these mills, so we are less dependent on fossil fuels. Mm. And also the uh, concept on the, that these are, these are projects which can actually mitigate mm. some of the emissions. We also have the removal part of it. So we have a whole range of projects where we have uh, planned to conserve forest, protect the forest. We empower communities who live in this forest yeah. to ensure that they don't uh, destroy the forest or they keep uh, encroachment and deforestation checked. Uh, so in these ways, we can actually have a more uh, uh, equitable uh, objectives being achieved by end of 2030. So those are the things which we are trying to do. We also want to know, it's about the ANG is among a few companies that have invested in Papua. Yes. Is it right? Correct. Okay. Probably very few, uh, one of the few. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So how do you ensure that the company activities also benefit the local people and not harming forests and the rich of flora and fauna there? So we have a significant land bank in Papua. Uh, I think we have uh, about 90,000 90, hectares, almost the size of a huge country. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got about 50 to 70,000 hectares of uh, pristine forest, which we have committed to preserve and conserve. The biodiversity is immensely very rich. We are trying to create an economic model for this uh, conservation and uh, preservation part of it. We actually have empowered communities and guardians to look after this forest. And that's a huge exercise. So they actually become part of the plantation where we, we employ them and also get a buy-in from them mm -hmm. to look after the forest. I think that's making a significant impact. This is also balancing uh, prosperity, planet, and people, balancing that equation to ensure that we reach a more sustainable uh, objective which, uh, which we are trying to uh, pursue. So, and also our presence in West Papua, I think uh, recently we had a macroeconomic study on mm -hmm. LPEM U UE, where we provided an economic output of uh, uh, 6.5 or 7.6 trillion. It's a 1.5 million uh, multiplier effect and reducing rural unemployment in, in these areas and also improving uh, the GDP overall for the region. And that's a significant impact to uh, one of the remotest uh, regions uh, in the world, that's West Papua. Strengthening academic resilience and improving business prosperity as well as building social and environmental resilience which benefits the community and the environment. Yes. 
Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Gita Govindan, as Vice President Director of PT Austindo Nusantara Jaya. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Real pleasure, Jessica. Okay. Thank you.